Hi friends! Yes, we are covering the Cleona Cosmetics and Emily Violet Marie collaboration, the Dragon Fruit Palette, or also known as the Dragon Fruit Collection. I only picked up the palette and two nail polishes. I unfortunately failed to pick up the fruit lighters. I forgot to put on an alarm when this collection dropped and missed out. What are you gonna do? This collection, including with the eyeshadow palette and the two polishes that I have, also have the fruit lighters, the brushes, a bag, and there's something else. Hold on. Actually, that's it. I remembered it all. I'm shocked. This collaboration released back in April on the 27th, and congratulations to Emily Violet Marie, a fellow beauty YouTuber here on the creative space. I would highly recommend that you check out her video. I will link it down below in the description box, but I saw it myself. Not only the video explaining Emily's collection, but her video showing the different swatches, and fantastic to see these shades on lids individually. For some context, Emily Violet had uploaded a video showing what if she made her own Too Faced palette, what would that look like? And she called it the Strawberry Champagne Palette. And Cleona Cosmetics happened to see that video, contacted Emily to ask, hey, you want to collaborate? And then was born the Dragon Fruit Palette. Emily had explained that this color story is close to her original Strawberry Champagne concept, a little more vibrant with the inclusion of purples and greens, but I cannot wait to get into this palette and the reason why I decided to buy one was because listen as someone who loves Cleona Cosmetics I had mentioned their brand here on my channel before do I have a video talking about Cleona Cosmetics I don't remember I do have Cleona singles here we have Terra Moon Cosmetics sorry I'm just consolidating space their roomies. The thing with Cleona is that they do have palettes, but they mostly sell singles or bundles of singles. And here is my current collection. To, you know what? I feel terrible. I don't use these as often as I should. And that's why I gravitated towards a palette. I think I just have to be honest with myself as a makeup user that I find palettes more accessible for me, whereas there are other makeup enthusiasts that rather deal with the singles and create their own palettes, if you will, on magnetic ones. I like the fact that Emily Violet did the thinking for me and just to share her vision and kind of diving into what she feels is her ultimate color story. And that's not just with Emily and Cleona, but that's just with a lot of brands, right? Especially with makeup artists and the such. I like to be a part of that process and a part of that vision. And if you don't know about Cleona Cosmetics, they are based in Canada and are known for their multi-chromes and just vast array of different finishes that are really mind-blowing in terms of the effect, the texture, the formula. I feel Cleona is the brand that is usually presented from the indie space to be compared to more mainstream makeup where a lot of mainstream makeup, they'll present their versions of duochromes, multichromes, and whatnot, and then people are like, <laughs> Have you seen the Cleona shadows? And they're correct. Listen, I think that Cleona has a lot to offer in terms of just that that different experience when it comes to color shifting multi-chrome shadows. If you don't know, Bad to the Brown, Millie on the YouTube space, incredible in showcasing the different brands that do multi-chromes so well. So I will make sure to post her video down below. Millie also has a Dragon Fruit Collection video that I will post. So, you know, I'm just spreading the indie love because I don't consider myself to be an indie makeup expert. I am, a, I am an indie makeup fan. So I hope that's okay. I, of course, had to get the nail polish because that, the nail polish, I love. So here are the nail polishes. I adore the bottle. It looks like a jewel. You have the rose gold chrome finish cap, which might not be the easiest to open. I prefer rubberized caps because of the better grip, but I think overall, a great aesthetic and these colors here we have dragontini and pitaya dragon T or excuse me pitaya dragontini here on this hand and i will post some videos beside me because let me grab the actual color profile i did two shots one with flash and one without because i thought the flash will best pick up that multi-chrome sparkle so dragontini is a sheer pink multi-chrome nail polish with intense gold lime turquoise shifts and pitaya is a semi-opaque multi-chrome nail polish with a strawberry pink base and a bright green teal indigo shifts 
So with the flash, you saw more of like the sparkle and shine and under cloudy light, cause I was outside and it was cloudy. I think you could pick up more of the shifts that exist on the bases. I applied three coats because I was gonna wash my hair this morning. I painted my nails last night. I just wanted them to last with the water and the washing and then the styling but i actually really like the quality of the nail polish i like the brush it's not too long not too short it's flat on the bottom but it's flexible and the edge is flat so although i do like a curved brush the fact that the brush is still on the small side not super wide makes it easier for me to push the polish towards my cuticle but not to overflow it it's smaller than the ilnp brush which i kind of like i'm not gonna lie so this is a great size brush but these polishes incredible I love the shift. The shift is strong, but the shine is super, super like sparkly celestial like. Kind of reminded me of Holo Taco's most recent release. I believe these were uh, Christine's pastel multi-chromes. You see the multi-chrome here, but there's like a crazy amount of shimmer shine in the Cleona polish. Cleona, you gotta make some more multi-chrome polishes, friends. I mean, I love them. They're gonna be a hit. Fortunately, however, polishes are unable to be mailed overseas. These are from Canada, Canada to the US. So for our overseas friends, I'm sorry that you won't be able to experience this nail polish, but let us know where your favorite polish brands are across the pond. We would love to know. The nail polishes retail for $11.14 USD and the palette $59.69 USD. A few details here. This has a 24 month suggested shelf life, handmade in Toronto, Canada by Cleona Cosmetics. And we're looking at 16 grams of product. Here is the palette up close. You have the overlay with the Cleona logo and the dragon fruit design with dragon fruit palette. I think that's like, this is like a holographic finish on the palette. And I love the back. It's like a jelly, fuchsia, violet type of a tone. You have a mechanical clasp here, good size mirror. The hinges fall, so if you need this to be stood up, you have to set it up against something to make sure it doesn't fall. And here you have the shadows. Again, I love the fact that everything is in a palette, but what's extraordinary is the number of formulas we have in one palette. I appreciate the fact that Cleona and Emily included a card to showcase the different finishes we have, especially if one is new to Cleona Cosmetics. I think this will familiarize them with the Cleona eyeshadow family to make a distinction amongst the different finishes and if they wanted to buy more, they know what to look for. 13 shadows, six formulas, wow. We have the sparkle shadow formula, the duochrome formula, velvet satin formula, metallic formula, and two multi-chrome formulas. Mm. To make this a little easier, I'm going by formula, therefore will not go by the palette layout, so I hope you don't mind that little adjustment. Effervescent and Infusion. These are the sparkle shadow formula and Effervescent is a pale peach sparkle shadow with rainbow shimmer. That's pretty, let me spread that out a little better so you can see. It's so shiny that the reflectivity, I think is hard to tell. Maybe I can do a little bit of a light situation, hold on. I'm trying to bring in another light source so maybe, you can see, but Millie is so good at this. I need lessons from her. Infusion, a semi-sheer lilac sparkle shadow with pink, purple, blue shimmer and a soft gold shift. This super dimensional shade doubles as a unique shadow topper. That is lovely. Look at that. Beautiful. Now to the duochrome formula. We have Hilo Sirius and Fruit Fizz, Fruit Fizz right here. Hilo Sirius is a magenta duochrome with copper shifts and warm undertones inspired by the bright colors of the common dragon fruit. Fruit Fizz, a salmon duochrome shadow with a golden lime shift inspired by the color variation of dragon fruit. Isn't that pretty? 
Wow. Next, we have the Velvet Satin Formula. This multi-purpose formula features smooth, saturated color that can be applied like a matte or metallic. Blend them with a fluffy brush for a low sheen effect or pack them on to build up the reflect. These versatile shadows are effortless, easy to use, and great for layering with other shades. And my apologies for not elaborating on the duochrome formula that these two are classified as. A classic Cleona formula full of color shifts and shine. These shadows are perfect for one and done eye looks. All right, we got four from the Velvet Satin. Let's start with Strawberry Pear. Strawberry Pear and Sweetened. Strawberry Pear is a coral velvet satin. Sweetened is a hot, pink velvet satin. I can see the reason why they would classify these as like a velvet satin based on the swatch. Definitely, I can identify the ease of blend potentially in that the more you blend it, it's not going to lose its sheen completely, but it's going to have a nice burnished look to it. And the next two, we have Catassier and Prickly. Catassier is a warm chartreuse velvet satin with lime undertones. Prickly, a rich grape velvet satin. Ooh, that's pretty. And I remember when Emily was describing that shade, Catassier, that it might look bright, but it's a, a golden infused chartreuse. And chartreuse is one of my most favorite colors in the entirety of colors, okay? When it comes to lime anything, now we're headed into the metallic formula. This high pigment formula features soft, buttery textures that make for easy application. Apply them with your preferred application method for metallic shadows. Cool. We have three here, and let me do all three so we could chug this along. We have Refresh, Dragonfly, and Exotic. Refresh is a bubblegum pink with a silvery metallic finish. Dragonfly, a glow stick green metallic. Ooh. Exotic is a rich raspberry metallic with red undertones. Because I'm terrible at spacing, I have to use my other arm for the last two, which probably appropriate because these are the two multi-chrome formulas. Our vibrant multi-chrome features a rich, colorful base with strong multi-dimensional color shifts. Our glitter type iridescent multi-chrome features a translucent base with strong color shifting reflects. This shade has a sparkly finish with a texture that melts into the skin. Both are best applied with a tacky base. And the ones that we're talking about, Bubbles and Dragon Teeny right here. Bubbles is a glitter type iridescent multi-chrome with platinum peach gold lime turquoise shifts. This dimensional shadow is reminiscent of the rainbow iridescence of a bubble. Dragontini, a mid-tone pink vibrant multi-chrome with gold lime turquoise reflex. So here are all the shades from the Dragon Fruit Palette and they're beautiful. And in addition to the card I just read from, we also have a look guide. So we get the lookbook in here that was included in the box. We got, well, how many looks? We got look one, we got two looks. So I thought why not just follow along because you know, I, I like for my hand to be held sometimes. <laughs> With all those swatches out the way, why don't you come in a little closer? Let's do the signature dragon fruit look. It says here to start with a primer and to not let it set. I don't know what the optimal type of primer is to use with Cleona shadows. The Linda primer is more like a uh, anti-shine type of a gig, but let's not set it. It says for step one to apply dragon teeny to the inner third of the lid. All right, so I'm going to tapity tap, and the way it's here is that, well, it looks like Emily takes it like a little farther out, almost like it's trailing. I'm using my Tonsado brush that's like a medium small shader. Ooh, that's lovely. I wonder if you can see more of the the pink because the flip is like a pink. And it's crazy on the photograph, it looks more pink, but the light is picking up more of the lime shift. Apply prickly on the outer third of the lid and pulling the shape and out to a point. Prickly, ah, this. 
this color. So I'll pull it in this way first to have better control over making this swoopy point. My technique is not the best, but in terms of the, the texture of the shadow, very smooth and easy even to bring it in a terrible shape that I did. All right, pat bubbles on the center lid. Bubbles, bubbles, bubbles. Oh, bubbles. The pretty, the the vibrant multi-chrome. So be careful because this is very flaky. So you don't have to pick up a lot. Just kind of tap it here on the center. Yeah, as, as the directions uh, said. Apply infusion to the inner third of the lower lash line in fusion ooh it's this beautiful lilac shade so oh gosh this brush might be a little too big but it's okay i would advise you pick up just a smaller a uh, pencil brush to keep this color tighter to the lash line if you want it if you want it that's just i think personal preference you know some people like their inner corner shadow to drop a little bit more. Then apply Sweeten to the center of the lower lash line. Sweeten is the velvet satin formula. So one, ooh, that was picked up a lot. This is the one that blends beautifully. It's not a matte, but it blends like one in terms of ease. Ooh. Now I'm just trying to match the slope here to what's happening up top yeah what i think i'll do is take a small blender and just to smooth the edges of prickly because the lines look a little too abrupt for my liking that's probably due to the fact that i was using a flat shader and i'll also do the same thing to sweeten here just pulling it all the way through as far as the inner corner i missed some steps <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me, I'm so sorry, Emily. I'm gonna go back. Apply sweetened over the center third of the lid. Okay, so let me take this. This is okay, could always go back. This is sweetened now to blur the edges of Dragontini. Okay, that's a nice gradient. I love that. I skipped Hylocereus. Okay, apply Hylocereus over sweetened, blending the edges into Prickly and Dragontini. Wait, hold on. Oh, okay, 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 okay. Okay, okay, okay. I think Hilo Sirius is one of the duochrome formulas. I think it's through here that I was supposed to apply it. I hope. Pretty! I think I was supposed to apply more Dragon Teeny on the inner corner. There we go. I'm going back with Prickly just to get a little more of that color with Hilo Sirius and Sweetened. Okay. All right. I think, I think we did it. Now for look number one. Hey, and don't skip any steps, Alicia, for crying out loud. The Dragon Teeny Cocktail. All right. Prime lids with favorite. Don't set it. Okay. Oops. I didn't finish the Dragon Fruit lid. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I have to apply the greens. I'm so stupid. <laughs> I have to do kind of CA on the inner tear duct and here. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. It looks that Emily used a very thin brush. It looks so tight to the, uh, like it looks carved, but you can still see it for sure. It's, even though it's subdued, it's still very vibrant. And then here, although I'm afraid I took out sweetened, I think too far, but it's okay. This has turned into an interpretation of the uh, dragon fruit look. Okay, all right. Now, now we can move on, Alicia. Can you read? I don't think you can. <laughs> so we're starting with the outer third, dragon teeny, and now infusion on the inner. I'm supposed to pull out dragon teeny a lot more. I think I have to go back and fix that. Apply Cadacea to the center of the lid and lightly blend the edges into fusion and dragon teeny. Okay, so I'm gonna pop that on the center. Just dab it a dab. Okay, there we go. I lightly add dragon teeny to the crease and blend to define the eye shape. Okay, dragon teeny to the crease, defining the eye shape. Check. Pat bubbles over top of Cadacea 
to create a spotlight effect. Spritz your brush with setting spray for added shine. Ooh, but this on its own, it's not bad. If desired, using what's left on the brush, pat bubbles lightly over infusion and drying and tingy as well. Okay, apply Evervescent to the inner half of the lower lash line. Effervescent inner lash line. Apply Dragontini to the outer half of the lower lash line with a clean brush. Blend both shadows downward to diffuse. I think this look is a lighter serving. Definitely hits more of a multi-chrome pastel type of a, a gig for sure, which is nice, right? A nice departure from what we have on this side, but I can only imagine if you wanted to, I'm just gonna, you know, do a little experiment. Like we can take Prickly and place that on the lash line if you wanted to create a little more intensity here, whether it be for your mascara or falsies, if you go in with the falsies. Using Prickly Pear just to dust a little bit here on the inner part of the look to give a little more, I think, you know, I just want to use more shades perhaps. That's really only what it is. Placing more infusion here on the inner part of my eye and making sure that meets the strawberry shade and how, you know, want them to flow together. And you could probably tap a little bit of Dragonfly. So that's gonna bring more of like that glow green vibe to the mix, whereas Catacia is a little more softer, pastel-y, chartreuse, okay? All right, I'm gonna apply some lashes and I'll be right back. So here are some close-up and wide shots of the final looks that I did following, well, almost because I can't read for crying out loud. The lookbook in the palette, and I have to say, very easy to achieve. The thing you have to look after is, in exchange for these lovely finishes and texture, you will experience fallout, but I don't mind it because to have a little bit of the sparkly on the cheeks, I think is not a huge issue, as I experienced that with Pat McGrath's Celestial shades and other formulas that have the same experience. Because I don't have the highlighters, I'll apply a little bit of effervescent. Why not on the cheeks? Now, I don't think this will have the same texture as the highlighter. I think the highlighter is a touch smoother. But what effervescence is going to create is more of like a a sparkly moment shade and you can see that it is very high shine but it can be done absolutely and i would suggest that perhaps you spritz the cheekbones first to have better stick and adherence so that these particles can melt into the skin but that isn't bad and very much multi-purpose in that respect you might be asking yourself you know alicia that's a beautiful palette but there's a lot going on and I don't know if it's going to be suitable for every day. I would argue the way to approach this palette as an everyday one, if you are working in a space that maybe not so welcoming to these shades put together, but if you use them one at a time, maybe don't combine them as much, I think you can get a lovely everyday look. And while I was using this palette, it reminded me of the Suku palette. Now I know they are not the same. This is very much subdued, but if you were to pull subdued out of the dragon fruit palette, I think you would get this. And I wanted to demonstrate now, I'll take this off, how you can perhaps approach the dragon fruit palette so that the looks are a lot more subtle and how you can integrate the more sparkly, arkly shades from a palette and use it with something that's more low key. So you can make the most out of your collection and maybe kind of break out of the box of expectations, right? Indie makeup is only for those who love to wear color. I think you just have to change your strategy a little bit. If you want this palette, if you want to have it in your collection, but don't want to use it as a one-off, I think you can find different ways to use dragon fruit. So let's take this off, experiment with how we can achieve that, and I'll be back in a minute. How can we approach this palette to achieve maybe a little more low key of a vibe. So let's go in with my primer first. And I think this works quite well with the Cleona formula. I didn't encounter challenges with any of the formulas here that I used on my lids. I do recognize how it will be advantageous to not set 
the primer in that you want to have a little more adherence when it comes to the sparkly arkly shades because the wetter or the more tacky the primer i think the stronger sparkle effect you will achieve if you like to powder down your primer or apply concealer as primer and apply powder after that skip the powder just keep the concealer tacky okay velvet satin formula what i would gravitate towards for one and done moments let's grab a fluffy shader flat on both sides i'll first do strawberry pear across the lid and this formula is described to not have as much sheen as the other formulas in here especially when you blend it out and if you saw this palette and thought well there are no mattes in here how can i blend out the edges well the velvet formula you actually don't need a matte the edges blend quite softly and look smooth especially as you swirl and twirl but there's still some sheen left behind let's do strawberry pear on the lower lash line now i think this color quite nice yes it's, it might sit a little vibrant i understand that but once you apply falsies or mascara i think it will look nice it won't look too crazy but what i was referring to before is when you start to add more of these shades that's when the eye look becomes more in your face, more vibrant. So be careful with what you pair strawberry pear with. For instance, if you apply Catacea on the inner corner, that's gonna be a lot more powwow. But if you go in with Evervescent, Evervescent, even a sparkle shadow, just here on the inner corner, I think invites the right amount of shine, but it's on a small region. So it's not going to be too crazy right you can pull it here on the inner lower part of the lash line if you want a little more sparkle so you can keep this as is you can probably apply a uh, black liner black brown liner black coffee from pat mcgrath i've been using the heck out of if you want it you can see how exotic or hilo serious looks maybe on the outer edge let's see how that looks taking exotic and just carefully brushing up from the lash line. So inviting a little more color here. If you wanted to create contrast, create another gradient. I'm also placing it on the outer lower lash line, taking a fluffy brush with no additional product and just kind of pulling everything together. I think that's pretty. I don't think that's too in your face. I know, depending on the person you're talking to, but this is a lot more toned down than our previous demo, don't you think? Just by using the three shades, predominantly strawberry pear on the majority of lid and lower lash line, and then inviting two colors, more like accents, to create a little bit of gradient depth here, a little bit of shine on the inner corner. Now, what if you had this palette and you decided to buy the dragon fruit palette? Hmm. Well, this is like the more subdued version of strawberry pear. This is the low key version of fruit fizz, a low key version of infusion, just so you can see the difference. And yes, I'm comparing them, but these are totally, <laughs> hello? These are totally different markets. Yeah, so here you see that is Cleona, that is Suku. Suku is not gonna have as much shine but it does have really nice sparkle. Definitely the middle ground for someone that doesn't want the, the duochrome, but they love the shiny shine. And here, this shade against Infusion. Infusion is definitely gonna have more powwow in your face. So this you could barely see. This is from Suku. This is more of a topper shade, and you can detect more of the lilac base from the Cleona palette. Let's do Hilo Sirius first on the lid i'm just gonna place that here on the center first and again because this is a velvet matte now hilo serious is a duochrome formula but it's still pretty smooth and i feel appropriate to blend without a matte however if you want it to i'm going to jump into the suku palette apply this matte here i think it'll go pretty nicely if i do say so myself applying more hilo serious here with my finger so that I can apply a little brighter. Going in with this shade on the inner corner because I think that will pair well with Hilo Sirius. Taking the lilac topper over Hilo Sirius, I could do infusion as well, you know, but 
just using the power of the duochrome from Cleona and pairing it with uh, the more subdued colors from Suku because again, even if you didn't want to rely on this palette for your entire look, you could use it as an accent palette, right? One day, if you want to go powwow, use all the shades on one eye, and on another day, you can pick and choose. Like, okay, I'm going to go fruit fizz for the showstopper moment of the day. You see what I'm saying? And why not? Let's do fruit fizz here on the lower lash line, like more on the center. Okay, I'm taking a little bit of the matte here from Suku's palette and placing it on the outer part of the lower lash line. And if you think what I'm doing is blasphemous, I think what I'm doing is realistic because ultimately we like to combine makeup and I think it's nice just to see what other formulas can do when blended together. And how are you supposed to know if you don't try? I think it's okay to experiment with different types of makeup, see what works, see what doesn't. Because in the end, they're all in the same drawer. Why don't you just use everything at once? Infusion on the inner corner, as well as bringing some to the inner lower lash line. You know what? Let me apply a little bit of prickly on the outer part of the lid, overlapping the Suku matte and bringing some in on Hilo Sirius. And then do a little flick out. Yeah, so if you want that to appear more purple versus plummy, you can make that adjustment. If you want, you can go in with Fruit Fizz over the Suku shadow, cause that's gonna give a little more, yeah? Yeah, going on Evervescent over everything, or if you wanna do the Suku Lilac, whatever you like. If you do Evervescent, you just have to tap once, and that's enough to get everything where it needs to go. All right, apply some lashes and I'll be right back. Here is round number two, showcasing the palette in a more subtle manner. I think it's fantastic. I'm happy that I bought it. It challenges my my approach to indie shades that I get into this mindset of going as crazy as possible because indie multi-chrome duochromes, that's what they're there for. I think why not apply these shadows in different ways where you're not gonna get the most sparkly multi-chrome look. Maybe take advantage of the velvet satin formula and just use that for your shadow of the day. And maybe use the sparkle or duochromes on the inner corner, or maybe tap one of the sparkle multi-chromes. Maybe use this palette with your other palettes like I did with the Suku. So I think there are many ways to go. I understand, however, if you see this palette and you see other demos and the amazing artists that just kill this palette with the looks and you automatically automatically think, oh, I don't know, that's like, that's not my style. I think if you find the right lever for yourself in terms of how you can incorporate indie shadows that will yield looks that are best for you, that make you feel comfortable, it's just a matter of finding the right combination. In the end, however, I totally get it if you feel this is not gonna be well used. If you're one to not use color or rely on these finishes for your looks, or you have purchased just these shades in some capacity, whether it be from Cleona or other brands and you haven't used them since, then yes, perhaps buying this palette is not going to result in a resurgence for your interest in these types of finishes. Yes, if you are a bronzy eye wear for life, then sure, maybe the Dragon Fruit Palette is not going to find itself into your bronze eyeshadow family. All that to say, I'm very happy that I bought it. I'm thinking of actually bringing it with me over the weekend just so I can experiment with it, see the different looks I can achieve because I feel like this is pretty chill. I know you might be thinking, what are you talking about, Alicia? I think it's pretty chill. The, the undertones of these shades are not so neon as Emily had said in her video that they're vibrant but still subdued, especially the velvet satin formula when you blend it. It doesn't have that high shine. There's a little bit of a sheen, but that burnished look I feel makes the colors that are made in this formula a little more approachable. And it gives you opportunity to layer the duochromes if you wanted, the sparkle shadow formulas. I think it's fun. 
It's a lot of fun. Yeah, I'm gonna take this along to the ride to Bay's house and just experiment and have fun with color. Why not? I think these are really nice to integrate into your everyday looks if you wanted. I will continue to use the palette. We'll let you know of any updates. And yeah, I'll see you in those comments. And until then, fam, that is a wrap. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope this video helped. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up or maybe consider subscribing to my channel. And until then, I will see you on here again with another review tutorial. Cleone Cosmetics Extravaganza, monthly favorites or vlog. Take care and I will see you again soon.